Hello, Elena. Catherine, I will always be one step ahead of you. When are you going to figure that out? When I first auditioned for the show, I auditioned for the character of Elena Gilbert. I went into it focusing on that one role. And then as season one began, there was mention that there might be flashbacks. I think they always kind of kept me wondering because they weren't even sure whether they were going to have me play Catherine or not. So here I am a year and a half later as Catherine and Elena. Hello, Elena. Catherine Katerina Petrova wasn't so laid out in the book series. So we had to, you know, really and sort of add on and expand upon uh, her backstory. We felt sort of obligated to answer the doppelganger question. It goes all the way back to England, 1492, after I left Bulgaria. How does Elena exist if Catherine didn't have a child? It was kept secret. Mm -hmm. My baby was given away. We like to make the joke that Nina Dobrev plays 37 characters on this show. We have seen Nina play Elena, 1864 flashback Catherine, present day Naughty Minx Catherine, Katerina Petrova from 1492. I mean, she was playing four roles in one episode. She's amazing. We have big plans for Nina Dobrev. We're just gonna keep expanding on any possible way we can use that girl because she's unbelievable. No one's job is easy. I just happen to be doing two people's jobs at the same time. <laughs> There's the episode, Katerina, where we see Nina playing all these great characters. I mean, if you really think about it, she was playing four different, she was playing Catherine at three different points in her life and Elena in modern day. This one's a little tough because it's often a change of hair, it's a change of makeup. Uh, you have to do the scene in two directions, so the actress actually has to know both dialogues. Catherine? And for 12 pages of dialogue, she is sitting in a tomb as Catherine, having a conversation with Elena there is nothing else going on. The two of them are face to face. At the time, I was kind of thinking about it. How are they going to do that? And it started off with split screen. Of course, the actress can't shoot that scene like a normal scene. She can't sit there and talk to herself. We had um, a body double who would stand, and I would plan how I would play each side. They would have to imitate every little movement I did from behind so as to not give away that it wasn't actually me. And then they would do a split screen, so we'd draw lines. And I had a limit of where I could walk and talk because they would cut it in half. They lock off the camera, and they can split a screen straight down the middle of them. And magically tape it, scotch tape, and it looks like one. And she was really good with a split screen. Think about it. These are young actors. They don't know all the visual tricks. This is an actress who picked it up. It's, it's a challenging task editorially. Nobody really knows until you sit there and actually do the split screens and put this line against that line. You don't even know how it's going to feel. Is it going to feel like two people talking, or is it going to feel like you know, the same actress looking in a mirror. The reality with those things for me is that once I started cutting those scenes, I tried to honestly forget as much as I could that I had the same actress. I got half of those scenes on one day and half of them the next day. So I basically sort of pre-selected takes I liked, and then it became almost matching in the back half of it to the, you know, the half I'd already created. The same actress is playing the two characters, so you actually have to find performances that, that distinguish the characters. You didn't really escape. You've been running from Klaus ever since. They underestimated his spirit for vengeance. Living out of a suitcase is better than dying so that you could have your blood spilled over some silly little rock. I have to think about what's going to happen and how I'll react. If Catherine says a line, she's snarky. I have to remember that for when I'm playing Lena, oh, she was just being snarky. I have to react offended. That's wrong. Afraid I'm right. And so there's just a lot of work and preparation and planning involved. There's a very technical part of this that I don't think people actually realize. There is matching. When you're doing take one, take two, and take three, and you put your hair to the side, you better do that on the same line every single take, or you're going to have an editing problem. And this is an actress who gets it. It's not tucked. This one's tucked. Mm -hmm. Continuity crazy. If you do it wrong, it just becomes silly, you know, and it just becomes kind of funny, and we didn't want that to be the case. It's really about the believability of the character itself. If you are engrossed in the scene and you think Elena is Elena and Catherine is Catherine, the split screens are sort of irrelevant. And I have never seen anything like it in my life when that was cut together. It was astounding to me. There were no mistakes. She had every line down for both characters. She was acting opposite nothing, and yet she was delivering the performance of the season for both characters, and it was astonishing. What else is needed to break the curse? Mmm, look who's getting smarter. Nina playing Catherine playing Elena is hard. <laughs>
It's hard in story, and it's hard for her to do. Towards the end of this season, um, Catherine ends up kind of dressing as Elena to kind of fool people. When we started doing Catherine imitating Elena and doing the straight hair and wearing her clothes, that's, that got even harder. When she was impersonating Elena, we kind of switched the parts a little bit. So even though you thought it was Elena, there was something off about the look that you saw in the entire episode. <laughs> Hello, John. Goodbye, John. I would look in the mirror and get confused because it's really Catherine being Elena, but trying to not tell the audience that she's Elena and then still have it be a little Catherine-y. We've done it a couple times when it's been really effective and then sometimes less so, and so we're always kind of like, hmm, can we get away with this again? Not sure. <sighs> Catherine. You have to admit, I am getting better at this. It almost like gets in my head a little bit sometimes when I go back and forth, it kind of messes with me, but um, but it's cool. And on top of that, you have to pour your eyes out and cry and burst into tears, take after take after take until your tear ducts are dry. I've been so selfish because I love you so much, but it's over. Believe it or not, when you look in the mirror and you look different, it helps you feel different and walk different when you put on the heels and your hair, when my hair is just like longer and I can just like play with it and, and I'm my, my strut, I have this like walk that I do. It just, it really, the physical and visual really transforms the internal. Yeah, it is always interesting seeing Nina transform into one of the other characters. You can just tell when it's Catherine and then when it's Elena, it's like purity and innocence and it's very obvious. There is a very big separation within the two characters. You can just tell when it's an Elena day, you can tell when it's Catherine day. You know, she has a little extra sass in her step. She embraces it, um, not just externally, but internally, and you can see it in her eyes. When Nina and I were talking at the beginning of the season about how to differentiate these two characters, I said, the biggest thing that will help you is when Elena looks at somebody, she's looking at them from a place of pure honesty. Catherine will look at someone, and though she might be pretending she believes, there's nothing inside of her that is honest. She has these very specific outfits that she wears. I can tell when she's Catherine. She gets to have the fun of differentiating the two characters just in her clothes. For Nina herself, she likes to be able to have a little bit of something that for her she can tell the, when she's acting what gives her a little bit of Catherine as opposed to Elena. So we try and make sure they're not, you know, in the exact same color because then that gets a little confusing. To change Nina, to Catherine or Elena, depending on what the look is. When it's the, the sort of the established curly look versus the established straight look, it takes about an hour one way or the other. Whenever they're setting up lights, I'm not sitting there, I'm running across the stage, getting my hair changed, and then coming back. Don't be frightened. We're gonna have so much fun together. Finding someone like Nina, it's all about finding that one person that I connected to, that I, that I see and go, I can write for that person, and then that perfect storm happens, which I feel like this Vampire Diaries is that perfect storm. It's wonderful being on set, watching Nina's performance. Nina is fabulous. She's, you know, as good as it gets. I'm really enjoying their performance, and I have to sort of pinch myself to remind myself, you're here looking at the makeup. I can't imagine playing two different characters entirely. It's interesting how well she took to it. She's really, really worked hard this year, and it's not easy. She's just on fire.